have experienced or learned, the way that I've learned things from other people, yes. You need those Mickey pancakes? All right, let me finish reading this chapter, then we're going to Mickey pancake it up. Okay. We're preaching out here, Noah. I need a, I need a, I need a, a, a strong, confident... That's real. What's up? What's up, babe? How can I help you? I want you to make Mickey pancakes. And I could Stop. have climbed... Morning. That... Please don't, please don't tip her back, brother. Sorry. We're trying to have a nice, peaceful uh, little bit of time here on the patio piece. If I look tired, my tiredness is a reflection of how freaking excited I have been all week long that this thing that is the proudest thing I have ever, ever, ever created, other than the crying human over here. Do you want to change your life? What do you want to change about your life? Now we're going to go. Now we're going to go. Okay. Last time, last one. I'm doing it one more time. I feel like I'm at the Jerry Lewis telethon. Y'all, yeah. I'm getting ready to go and make us some Mickey Mouse pancakes. Welcome back. We're not quite done with Dave Hollis and, and his porch of panic yet. We're gonna talk about his kids. So I learned something from this, from this last Dave Hollis video. I, my experience was I hear Dave Hollis had a train wreck video. I go on, I watch it. It's a two hour video. I make it like five minutes in and I'm over it. But I push through 10 minutes. He gets super agitated. You know, I'm going, okay, I'm going to do a video on this. So I keep watching at about a half hour. I'm done. I post the video, and all of a sudden, the comments I see people saying, hey, why didn't you talk about how he treated his kids? I'm going, I didn't see any kids. So I go back on, I suffer through more of it, and at, at the hour mark, his daughter, who I assume Noah, who I assume has woken up because he's shouting on his, on his porch, his porch of peace, which commenters have called the, the porch of panic, uh, he wakes up Noah, his four-year-old daughter. She walks out and says, hey, can I get some pancakes? And he dismisses her and continues to dismiss her. And then later, his son, Ford, who I think is nine, he dismisses them for like a full hour, despite the fact that people on his live stream are saying, go take care of your kids. I mean, they're, they're, his daughter's crying. They're fighting. His son's coming out in different costumes. They're like desperate for his attention. And he is so like clearly not checked in to them and what they need. And so people are outraged by it. And I'm I'm outraged by it. I think that there's good reason to be upset by it. And I, I, find, I think it's really easy for people in my position, there's a little YouTube channel, can go on here and go, how dare he, he's the worst father in the world. But the reality is... I have engaged in that exact same behavior. And I think most of the most parents, if they're honest, have engaged in that behavior. They maybe haven't done it for a full hour, and they maybe haven't done it um, <laughs> to the scrutiny of the entire world, um, but they've engaged in the behavior. So I, my reaction is, he treated his kids like crap. I agree. But more than that, it made me think about my own behavior. You know, I'm not on social media, uh, you know, live streaming, but I have absolutely been writing emails. I've been writing assessment reports and said, hey, just five more minutes. And that five minutes turns into 20 minutes, right? Like I've, I've definitely engaged in that. And it just made me think about, like when I was watching Dave do it, I, I kept thinking, Dave, you are accomplishing nothing. You, you are, you're doing nothing but hurting your career. But, but like really, if you just take a step back, as far as like what's actually meaningful in your life, you're doing nothing right now on this live stream. And the people that actually mean something are being diminished and mistreated. And you look like an idiot. And it made me think, my God, like that's probably how I look when I'm like trying to get an email off. In the big scheme of, th in the big, in the big scheme of things, that email's not nearly as important as my kids. So like it was a, it was a, I think it was important for me to recognize that. And the exchange with his kids also brought clarity though to sort of how, the irony of it all, you know, his book is all about finding the thing that that fulfills you, that is meaningful for you, and and do that with all of your heart, and don't be, don't chase the carrots, right? Don't don't chase the the money, the accolades, the whatever your professional ambition is. Don't do it because you want other people to be impressed with you. Do it, do it for you. And here he is in full panic mode because his book isn't selling the way he wanted it to, right? 
Well, if you really cared about, if you're really devoted to coaching and developing and growing your audience, then you wouldn't be so freaked out. But he's terrified because he may not make the New York Times bestseller list, or he's terrified because he's not going to make enough money, or he, right? It's like, Dave, you are on the same machine. You're on that same ladder that you keep talking about. You just don't realize it. Like he doesn't have the perspective to step back and go, oh, I'm, I'm, ch I'm still chasing the wrong things. And it just makes me second guess like the whole personal development industry. Like it, Dave believes that this book is going to help people find their purpose. And he's got this idea in his mind that purpose is like this one thing. You have to just figure out what this one thing is and then you're happy. And in my experience working with people, that's it's complete bullshit. There is not one thing that you need to figure out. Like, I've just started the book, but this idea of you go to the, the end of the desert and you just sit on a rock with a journal for three days and then you know who you are, is to, to me, it's just, it's such, it's like he's using such platitudes and speaking about them with such confidence about the deepest things, but he's just, like, he doesn't, I don't think he really gets it. Like, that's not how you find your life's purpose. And your life's purpose isn't just one thing. And it doesn't just come to you in an epiphany. No, you have to engage in all kinds of activities in your life. And you have to find different areas of your life that bring you purpose. You find purpose everywhere. He gets, Dave gets, I promise you, purpose from his family. Purpose from, from, from having the attention of social media. Purpose from accomplishing things uh, professionally at Disney. Purpose from writing his book. And purpose from having his, his, his voice and, and, um, and thoughts move on. Or whatever. All, those, all these things are sources of purpose for him. It's not like you just have one thing and he keeps saying, I'm put on this earth to do X, Y, or Z. It, it, I feel like he is so out of touch with reality. He's living a Disney movie about finding your purpose in life. And it's... I, I think it's misguiding, and I um, we'll see. I'm going to read the book, or I'm reading the book, um, and I I can like feel myself being super skeptical about it. So I will try and do an objective review of it. But I just using this to sell a book about purpose is like the height of irony to me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe.